The purpose of process is to help teams work more efficiently and effectively together. However, when stitching together homegrown application lifecycle management solutions or using overly complex products, this is not always the case. In these cases, process often inhibits effectiveness rather than enhance it. Visual Studio 2010 Ultimate takes a different approach. Visual Studio 2010 Ultimate helps teams streamline process across every discipline. To see this in action, let's start in the role of a project manager. Everything in Visual Studio 2010 Ultimate begins with a team project. Team projects serve as a central repository for an entire team's work. We only need to make a few choices when creating a team project. The first, and most important, is the process template that we want to use. A process template is essentially a blueprint for our team to follow. We can choose from a set of project templates that ship with Visual Studio 2010 Ultimate, or we can download a process template from a Visual Studio partner. It's also very common to use custom process templates. Organizations typically pick a process template that is close to the methodology that they want to follow, then tweak it to suit their specific needs. Our next choice is how we want to treat our version control. We are starting a new project so we will create a fresh route for our source code. That's it. With a few choices, we can create our repository. The Team Explorer is the window in Visual Studio 2010 that we can use to access our team project. That is only one of our clients. There are many different clients that we can use to access our team project. We will see a number of them in this demonstration. Since we chose an Agile focused process template, we have a number of Agile oriented assets created for us. For example, iterations, workbooks, and backlogs. To get our project off on the right track, we will define a set of user stories for our first iteration. Visual Studio may not always be the best tool for every job. For example, a project manager working with a list of user stories might feel more comfortable using Microsoft Excel. Visual Studio 2010 Ultimate is integrated into many different tools. Excel and Project are just two examples. We can use Excel to quickly define a list of user stories. This data will be stored as work items into Team Foundation Server 2010. It doesn't matter what tool we use to enter our user stories, that same data is available throughout our project. Let's switch roles now and assume the role of a developer. Let's suppose that we have implemented a few of these user stories. In order for the rest of our team to know what is going on with our project, we need to communicate the fact that these stories are now implemented. As a developer, we just have to associate these work items with our check-in. Visual Studio 2010 Ultimate will store this association for us and propagate this information to the rest of our team. We literally just have to check a checkbox. As we talked about earlier, Visual Studio 2010 Ultimate is geared towards streamlining process. Our team has implemented what is known as gated check-ins. That means whenever we check in code, that new code is held in quarantine until a build of that code is successful. This helps ensure that we do not introduce breaking changes into our project. Almost every team would find this sort of thing helpful, but most systems implement gated check-in in a very obtrusive manner. Visual Studio 2010 Ultimate is different. We get a notification telling us that gated check-in will occur. But that's it. We can just dismiss that dialog box and continue working. Our changes are shelved away, so we can evolve our local workspace as much as we would like. There's no need to wait until the gate check-in build completes. We can just work away on other tasks. We will get a notification when our gated check-in build starts, but that's just information. It doesn't interrupt our work. We can just work on the rest of our tasks. Finally, when our gated check-in build does finish, our changes will be propagated to the team. There is a chance that our local workspace has changed, 
so we have a chance to reconcile our gated check-in work with our local workspace. From a development perspective, we don't have to do anything beyond checking our work in. Visual Studio 2010 ensures that our work is routed to the right places. Visual Studio 2010 Ultimate has a lot to offer testers as well. As a tester, we have a new dedicated product, Microsoft Test Manager, that helps us organize, track, and run tests. Let's switch roles and log in as a tester now. Microsoft Test Manager helps us connect our test plans and test suites, customer requirements, and user stories. As a tester, we can quickly see what user stories are in play in this given iteration. More importantly, we can also see what user stories have not yet been tested. We can see that there is one user story that has no test associated with it. This should never be the case. If there are active user stories in a given iteration, we should be testing them. We can link a test case to this user story. We already have a test case that addresses the registration scenario, so we just have to bind them together. This link tells the rest of our team how we will validate this particular user story. Let's switch gears a little bit. We start to really experience the power of Microsoft Test Manager when we start to analyze our test runs. It's very clear that most of our tests passed, but we do have a failure. We can easily turn that failing test into a bug for our development team to investigate. What makes this bug special is that while our tests were running, Visual Studio 2010 Ultimate was collecting a great deal of data. All of this data is automatically attached to our bug so our developers can diagnose the problem quickly and easily. These bugs can contain historical debugging information, system event logs, and even a desktop capture video of what was happening when the bug occurs. This amount of information really makes the communication between developers and testers very crisp and very clear. We have already seen how developers can associate work items like bugs with their check-in. That check-in will in turn trigger a new build. Let's assume that our developer has fixed this bug and checked in that fix. The check-in will result in a new build, so we will assign it to this test plan. Based on the tests that were affected in this build versus the previous build that was assigned to this plan, Microsoft Test Manager will recommend a set of tests for us to run. This takes the guesswork out of planning our test pass. As testers, we can spend less time trying to plan our testing and more time actually doing testing. Microsoft Test Manager can recommend tests for us to run based on differences between builds. It can also tell us which bugs were resolved by a new build. We can now verify this bug fix with our existing test case. Our test case asks us to enter information for a new user. The information we should enter is available as parameters in this test case. Again, this takes the guesswork out of testing. We don't have to try and figure out what values we should enter. A parameterized test case like this ensures that anyone from our team can run this test case and still have the same effectiveness in terms of verifying the fix or even finding more problems. But running this test case manually can be a little bit tedious. When this test case was created, every mouse click and keyboard stroke was recorded into an action script. We can use that action script and have Microsoft Test Manager automatically play back our manual tests for us. Microsoft Test Manager will run each step for us. This is a great way to quickly verify a bug fix. Our scenario passes this time, so the bug fix has been verified. Finally, Let's assume the role of a project manager responsible for this project and see all of our work pulled together. 
The reports generated by Team Foundation Server are a great way for anyone on our team to get a bird's eye view of what's going on. These reports are built automatically, so they don't add overhead to the team. The Stories Overview report really helps us understand our progress because it brings together three key concepts. First, we can see how we are progressing on the user stories that define what we want to build. Secondly, we can see how far we are towards implementing what we want by looking at the code check-ins and accomplished tasks. Lastly, we can see the quality of what we are building based on our test pass-fail rate. Seeing this data graphically displayed immediately draws our attention to any potential problems. From this report, everything looks good. For a broader view of the project, we can go to the project portal. The burn down dashboard helps us determine our progress towards finishing an iteration. We can see from the chart on the left that we are progressively completing our tasks, so we are making good progress. On a broader scale, we can see that our user stories are starting to get resolved as well. That's a good sign. Visual Studio 2010 Ultimate ensures that process is something that helps teams. Project managers, developers, and testers can all work smoothly and efficiently as an unobtrusive process guides them towards success.